Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this hopefully small video on how to install Tapeworm and FFmpeg for Grasshopper. Um, for those of you who don't know what Tapeworm is for, um, it is a small plugin developed by myself and Mark Differding, and uh, it will allow you basically to create uh, MP4s, uh, GIFs, uh, or whatever other video format uh, from a set of of images. So if you've made like an animation through Grasshopper, for example, you will be able to create a video from those uh, from those frames uh, directly inside of Grasshopper. Uh, you won't need any other software or, or website. Um, so the tricky part of the install is that Tapeworm relies on FFmpeg, which is an open source software used like in the in the film industry, in the music, streaming. Um, and so we're gonna just cover uh, how to install it. And basically Tapeworm will use FFmpeg to create the animations. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Once you've in downloaded the file from Food for Rhino, you will have something like this. You simply just extract it here um, and then you have a folder with subfolders and other links. Uh, let's go ahead and install. So here the first folder have a has a bunch of uh, Python files. Let's just uh, copy this and put it in the libraries, the Grasshopper library folder. So for Mac users, it's somewhere here in one of these two links, depending on the Rhino version you have and depending on your serial number and name. Um, but for window, Windows users, you just go here and you can type up data like this with a percentage, hit enter, and then you go to Grasshopper libraries and you paste it here. We go back in the original folder, we grab the tapeworm user objects, which is basically user objects, magic. Let's copy it. You go back to your Grasshopper library, you go one folder back and you have user object folder right here. Double click in that and you paste it here. So now, so for Mac users, it's the same. You just go back one uh, folder up and then you will find user object and you can drop it here. Um, so that's it. Tapeworm is installed. Now let's go ahead and install um, FFmpeg. So in the extracted file, extracted folder, you will have a link to FFmpeg. So we arrive on the main page. You have a download section on the left. Um, so once again, I'm gonna cover quickly Mac first and then Windows. So for Mac, you just hover your mouse over the logo, you go here, and then you wanna download as zip here on the right. Um, so once you've downloaded that, you will have to extract the, the file and zip it. Uh, and then you wanna place the, you will have only one file and you wanna place it into user user local bin. Um, for those of you who don't know how to access this uh, directory, uh, in the extracted tapeworm uh, folder, we also like put a link to our GitHub repo. So you just double click here and uh, we scroll down a little bit, we have FFmpeg installation installed on Mac. You can click to expand and here uh, Mark explained in detail how to access here, starting at step four, how to access this uh, directory. And so you can place it into that. Um, so that's it for Mac users, for Windows, for once it's uh, easier. 
Um, let, let's go back here in the download section. You hover your mouse over the logo and then you want to click on this one. Once you've arrived on this page, you scroll down a little bit, you see release, and you can grab this one, the, the FFmpeg release essentials. Uh, up. Let's click, whatever, let's keep that name. Download, it is done. I go back here to my download folder um, and we see that this has been downloaded. We extract it here. Hit refresh, refresh F5 uh, on Windows, obviously. Um, and so we wanna, so here for Windows, we have like a bunch of other files in. Let's just keep this uh, folder, we copy it and then we want to go to the C drive, as you can see here, C drive. Once you're on the C drive, you just paste it. And it's here under, and that's it. Uh, that's it, that's installed. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, create uh, our first GIF, for example, with a set of image. So here I happen to have um, like a bunch of image from uh, an animation I've made with Grasshopper. Um, and so I'll go I'll open this in new window. So here, am I, here I am in the download section again. Uh, actually, I don't need download section again. Let's just launch a uh, a Rhino, we just launch Rhino. Um, so yeah, we're gonna just cover how to create a GIF uh, out of frames, but you will see it's the same uh, workflow to create anything, basically. If you wanna create a video, it's uh, like 95% the same. Um, if you wanna create, like you can also extract images from uh, videos, you can extract from GIFs, uh, you can convert GIFs to videos uh, and videos to GIF. Uh, yeah. For now, we don't have as much settings as we want, but uh, this will more likely grow in further releases. So once you've loaded uh, Grasshopper, you'll see that Tapeworm has appeared here on top. Uh, but for now, Tapeworm doesn't know where FFmpeg is on your computer. So what we need to do uh, is to let him know where it is. Uh, to do so, you just take the head here, the remote component, and you just drop it. So it loads a bit, uh, it, uh, but basically now it knows where it has discovered where uh, FFmpeg is if you installed it correctly. Uh, next time it will load faster. Next time you don't need to load this one first. Actually, you don't even need to load this one first now, but it's for the like for the explanation of the video more than anything else. So let's go ahead and grab like few components here. You can see we have like three sections. We have IO, which is everything linked to folders, uh, input output. Uh, we have settings, which are like create a GIF out of frames. Like this one, we have create a video out of frames, etc. Um, and then you have the run section, which consists of remote, which is a component that will call uh, FFmpeg and run the settings you've asked, and uh, a batch rename that uh, will allow you to uh, rename like fast. Uh, I don't know a thousand of images if you need. Uh, rather than manually. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's read what the... So basically you also want to have like the tail, the body and the head. Uh, that's how that's how it works. Uh, so here it asks for source path. Um, so let's go ahead and call this. We can connect it and let's set one existing file so here, once again, uh, the folder with the frames. 
Um, we want to select the first image of the sequence. So I'll take that one. Now you see that it is working. Um, you can set a target folder, uh, but it's not necessary. As you can see here, if you don't set any target folder for the for the GIF, like where Tapeworm puts the GIF, uh, you can leave it blank and it will basically put the GIF into the same folder as where the images are. Uh, if you want to do, uh, if you want to put a folder, when you do this, you have to select this, like select a directory. And that is where uh, Tapeworm will, will uh, st yeah, store, create the, the GIF or the video, whatever. So for this video, we're gonna leave it blank. Once we've done that, what we do is we connect IO to IO here, the tail to the body. We have uh, default values here for frame rate, 30 frames per second. We have default values everywhere. You can just play with that if you want. I mean, it's meant to be played with, so. Uh, and then here, what we need is uh, like a send, to send uh, like the actions to FFmpeg. So let's go ahead and load the button. And you click on it. So on Mac, nothing will appear, but on Windows, you will have like these window shell popping up. Uh, if you have this white thingy lighting up, it means that it is doing its job. So don't worry. Have to wait a little bit and that's it. It's done. If you go back to the folder with the images, since we didn't set a target folder, otherwise you go to the target folder. Uh, but so here I go back to this one. I scroll down and as you can see, we have an animation that has been made, a, a GIF that has been made. And if I double click on it, it works. Oof. So that's it um, for this video. Uh, hope you will like this. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know in the comment if you have questions, if you have feature requests. Um, and uh, you can also contact us through Food for Rhino, emails, etc. Uh, but we hope you like it, and uh, that's it. See ya.